It's a really special week uh, this week. I think there's something like is it 10,000 shops and businesses are all taking part in this initiative to have an autism hour. Yeah. You know, where they kind of change the conditions w within their premises in order to just make it. Yeah, it's a simple bit more changes, but for families like mine, it's going to make such a huge difference. And this is all thanks to the National Autistic Society that have yeah. got them on board to do it. Um, we've made the, a little bit of an effort for you. I hope you've noticed. We've, yeah. we've done various things, we've changed the, the colour scheme. Are lower. And it's quieter. There's no music. Or There's no music. Or... It's it's really nice. I I think it's lovely. It's a lot more relaxed. In terms of inviting all these lovely people here, you know, created a timetable of of the day, um, also a sort of visual story of of what was going to happen. Contact numbers. You know, we gave out pictures of the studio. I think a and the big set part beforehand. of it is reducing anxiety for autistic people. I know that's where my children really struggle on on a day to day basis. When it's not Monday to Friday and they're not in school where the routine is pretty much the same, we would really struggle to go anywhere different if we didn't give them a visual calendar or something to work on, just so they know what's going to happen day to day. It needs a beginning, what does a middle visual, and an end. Explain to people watching what a visual calendar is. So do you make pictures of where you're going to yeah, go? Yeah, so we'll use photographs yeah. or we'll get images off the internet, especially if we're going to go somewhere new. Yeah. Um, even if family members are coming over that they haven't seen for a while, yes. I want to show them a photograph to say this is who's coming. Um, I think the last picture on the board is the most important because that's the home picture, yeah. just to show them that back. wherever we're going, if we're going to the park, we're going to get in Mummy's car and then we're going to go home. And it's just, it's just pictures. Yeah. Christine, can I ask you, because obviously today we know that our sets change and I didn't mean to do this, but I feel like my behaviour's changed a bit. And do you... And I didn't, I didn't mean to be, but I am probably a little bit quieter, a bit more considerate. Do you feel that people do need to do that? Um, and do, uh, we should be aware of actually our behaviour yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis when you may suspect that actually somebody is there... Yeah, has definitely, got the that's, that's all it takes. You know, we're not expecting to educate the whole world. It would be great if we could, but I just think in general, as a society, if you think something is a little bit different, if there is a child that's really upset, it might not always be down to autism, but just bear in mind that there might be another reason beyond that child just having a tantrum. It might be that they're overwhelmed, they're scared, they're frightened. Well, that trip to the shops, you know, yeah. talk us through the trip to the, to the shops and, and why it is important to have an autism hour, you know, how discombobulating can it be when everything is well, kind of going for families like mine, it's almost impossible. We just avoid going shopping with the children. Um, I have taken them, I've tried taking them with um, ear defenders on to block the noise out. And whilst that really helped the children, I wasn't prepared for the amount of stares and the looks that we were going to get. I just assumed that surely people will know that I'm just protecting the little ears. At the time when I was doing that, I didn't know myself that they had autism. I just knew that they didn't like the noise. Um, I went back a couple of weeks later, I, I took the ear defenders off and I put headphones on and I played nursery rhymes mm. into the headphones. That was better. The children were still really settled. They weren't upset with all the tannoys and the tills. People didn't stare as much. Um, and I just gradually lowered the volume on the nursery rhymes until they got used to the noises. Now we can go, but it's, it's just not a nice experience. Especially for, with three children, with, it's with really three. hard. Yeah. But I think also to dim, the, dim the, all the announcements and quieten everything down for an hour a day would be great for older people mm. too, not just for... Um, people with dementia, is it? Yes, yeah. exactly. Not for ch just children with autism or autistic adults. When you go to in, into any retail area now, the noise coming at you, they've got their own radio stations, you've got jingles, yeah. it's, and you've got signs. and I find it really The layout often. changes. Mm. So even yeah. as an adult, you go into your normal supermarket, Yogurt's not where it was last week. Yeah. Uh, cheese has moved. And then you just think, I'm going Yeah, but nuts. for an autistic person, mm -hmm. that is just too much to handle. The fact that things aren't where they should be, as far as they're concerned, mm. everything's changed. The staff are different all the time. It's, it's just and not... And food is a big problem as well, isn't it? Food's a big problem for us. So, um, again, before I knew the twins had autism, we were going to food play therapy because um, they wouldn't touch any any... 
anything wet, anything hot, anything with any kind of smell, um, and we didn't know why. So the therapist was telling us, you just need to play with food, get them used to it. Um, the, it turns out it was all down to their senses. Yeah. But another thing, what she suggested was taking them shopping, get them involved in the shopping, mm. let them choose their own food. Of There's course, so much to learn, it. Christine. How do you learn this as a parent? For me, I just felt like I tuned into their needs before I even knew they had autism. I was using pictures to communicate because their speech wasn't there. I didn't know that that was something what um, autistic mums do. It was just that that's just what we've done to communicate. You just figure it out. You just, you know, with your children, there's, there's something you just know. Is it true that you're thinking of making a reality show with, with Paddy that's sort of opened the doors <laughs> no. to everyone? No, no. No. No, I don't even know where that came from. And do and you know what? The support we've had online since that story was made up. Um, oh, it's, right. it's been lovely and I wish we could sort of raise all that awareness. We are doing something together. So part of the rumour is true. We are doing a documentary together and it is all about autism, but there's no way for our children, for my family, a camera crew would work. It would just be far too upsetting. It would be too mm. unusual. We barely have family in the house, so I can't invite a camera crew over. But we are doing a documentary and it will all be about autism. Okay. So and, and you will meet other families presumably and you know yeah we want to people. explore all like where it manifests how it's different for you know the spectrum's huge I want to go meet autistic adults as well as autistic children um, I want to look at all the different therapies that people use I speak to so many people online and we all swap and share tips some people medicate their children I don't. So it's, we just want to explore everything. Yeah. Um, um, that's my husband's game in TV. He knows what he's doing. So hopefully he'll guide me through it. Well, Your husband, of course. Uh, but he has sent us a little message, Christine. Has he? He please? has. Let's have a wee looky. Hello, love. I've snuck out of our house and I'm outside the local shop in the village uh, to send you this message. I hope you have an amazing show. Uh... Sorry I can't be there, but as you know, if one of us is down there, the other one's got to be up here doing the world's best relay with the kids. You are an amazing mother and an amazing wife. Have a fantastic time. Lots of love to the rest of the girls on the panel and lots of love to everyone in the room. Come on! <laughs> nice. it, must be, it must be tough on you as a couple. Yes. You don't get to spend nights away or go on holiday. Or... I have to say, he's amazing too. Oh, wow. Yes, he's brilliant. Yeah. He's so good. He's so good, I think. Um... Where's our tissues? tissues? <laughs> when you need them. I, I, I find it easy with the children. Yes, it's challenging, but I, I, um, I just manage it. He, he struggled, and I think if you're doing what we're doing and you struggle, it's ten times worse. Um, for me, I've just got on with it, and that's what I do for him. He does it because he has to, because he loves the children. What's the struggle? Um, I think just getting his head around the fact that we've, you know, we've got three children with a lifelong condition that we knew nothing about, and nothing can prepare you for that. You've got to learn on the job. And um, he's doing absolutely amazing. He's, he's, he only spoke about it for the first time recently. And I think since he has done, he's opened up. I think it's harder for men and for dads to Don't open up anyway. Don't you think it's also help. totally at odds with his public image? You know, he's so cheery and cheeky and he, he doesn't really exhibit a vulnerable side. Yeah, and, and we've always stayed so private anyway. Um, it's just... It's a different world. What we have at home is completely different to what he's used to doing. But it must, like you said, it must put a strain on your relationship. Have you both been to counselling? Have you had help for your relationship in no. this special environment? No, no, not at all. And um, it's just, it's part of the parcel. I think for us, we know the kids are always going to come first um, and we just have to try and make time for each other when we can. 
for the first time in 11 years, that I've been with him 11 years, he's, he's been at home for around 10 weeks and that's never ever happened. We've never had that time together before. It's been lovely. He has got to go back to work at some point. <laughs> um, but he's, we've never had that time together and we're still limited to what we can do. We'll go to the local village. We always try and stay near the children's school just in case we get a phone call. Um, so we're not going to go off on a romantic night away or a holiday. That's something we still haven't done with the children. We haven't gone abroad. Um, it's, it's difficult, yeah. but we just try and make the most of it. And thank God, you know, I'm married a comedian, so we laugh every day <laughs> and we just get on with it. Yeah, but that's so fun. Yeah.